And of course, we wish all of you many, many more. Alrighty, uh, we have little orphans here in the front of the church. They're called poinsettias, and they're looking for a home. I mean, there should be, a, an, there's an organization for animals that need a home, the ASPCA. So let's look at the PSCPCA, the Plant uh, Society of America. Good morning, Jake. And so these guys need a home. Um, our wonderful plant person here has been taking care of them, okay, and Marie is, is not able to come in on a daily basis, and uh, Charlie wants to shut the temperature down to where these little guys will start going. It's too cold. So please, we don't want to torture or kill off these little guys, and there's bags in the back. Please take them home. We'd love to have you enjoy them for the rest of their natural life, okay? And don't ask my wife, because uh, she and I have brown thumbs when it comes to plants like this, they, they die rather quickly. At least that's merciful. All righty, and uh, one last thing. Um, oh, the, the sign-up sheets in the, uh, in the narthex. And uh, <clears throat> we only have a couple of people signed up. I'm asking you to take a leap of faith, put your name on that list. Even if you're unable to be here, you know, we'll find a substitute for you, but we need names. We need people that are willing and able to help out with, uh, with our order of service. That, that's important for us to be the, uh, you know, the people of order so that we can, uh, we can run a service correctly. All right, so any other announcements before the congregation? Jake, you wanted to say good morning to everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good boy. Good man. All righty. Hearing and seeing no more, Charlie, go ahead and ring the bell, and we'll continue with the opening hymn, 384, 384.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with true hearts and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office, as called an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This great gift of forgiveness needs a response from us. In the words of the introit found printed on the worship insert provided in your service bulletin for this morning. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. In those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. God on high. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. 
For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Pray together the collect of the day as printed on the worship answer. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Everybody is invited and certainly encouraged to follow along the appointed scripture readings for today. And by the way, uh, this affords us an opportunity. Um, there is no lectionary lottery, as it were, that a uh, uh, person spins a, a, uh, like a ball or something like that, and then it says, and that's when people put it down in the lectionary. These. What we have is a set of three-year lectionary cycle. I explained that to a person this morning to, to their understanding because they found out in the one-year series they were leaving a lot of the stories of the scriptures out because you only have 52 weeks, right? 52 Sundays. So they established a three-year pattern. We're actually in, currently in cycle C, if I remember correctly. And uh, it starts when we begin in Advent, which is the beginning of the church year. So last year, we'd already started the new church year. So this is the scripture reading for the second Sunday after Christmas and falls in line with what's going on during that part of the church year calendar. Our first reading comes from the first book of Kings, chapter 3, beginning at verse 4. And this is... This is a wonderful, in fact, all three of the scripture reading. Um, anybody ever heard of uh, the sandwich generation? Right? There's the really elderly, and there's the young, and then there's those of us that are in between because we're still kind of taking care of those who are older than us and those who are younger than us, so we're the sandwich generation, okay? We're sandwiched. Well, in a way, there's a sandwich here, too, because God gives to us today... Um, two scripture readings about wisdom, and not just, not just average wisdom, you know, the folk, folklore tri type wisdom, you know what I'm talking, Will Rogers kind of stuff. This is wisdom that is so powerful that people traveled from all over the world to speak to this individual by the name of Solomon. And you'll find out how Solomon gets that wisdom in our text for today. The second reading is about love. That's the filler material in between. That's why I love the double stuff Oreo cookies. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Anybody? Anybody like the double? The regular ones are okay, but I like the double. And you know, I even double up on the double stuff because I'll take and open that one up and open another up and sandwich those two babies together. And I got a quadruple stuffed. Okay? So that's the way I like it. So God is sandwiching a lot of love between his wisdom. 1 Kings chapter 3. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. This is Solomon, by the way. For that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. I want you to think about that. Imagine a barbecue where you're... You're cooking up a thousand different items on it, okay? Not even our church picnic come close to that, okay? So this was huge. Imagine the smell. Ah, 
just gets me going. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. He wasn't quite that little, but uh, what he's speaking of is experience-wise. Huh? Anybody had that experience? You know, you start a brand new job, you have no experience in it, and you feel like a child finding your way around there. I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for the multitude. Give to your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? Wow, this is something uh, every president should ask for, right? Discerning between good and evil. Yeah, anybody elected to office. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Thus far the reading of the Old Testament lesson. Join me, please in our responsive reading of the gradual on the flip side. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song. The epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the people in the city of Ephesus, chapter 1 beginning at verse 3. And remember, this is the love sandwich stuff in between. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. Amen. 
thus far the reading of the epistle last year. Gospel is the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 40. Please rise for the Gospel reading. Beautiful story, and I believe we've already had it within the last couple of months, about Jesus being in Jerusalem, talking to the rulers of the temple, and showing them his wisdom, insight, and understanding of scriptures. The child Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. Figure 10, 12 miles. Excuse me, and I had to catch my... Oh, but then they began to search for him among the, the relatives and acquaintances. And they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days... They found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor before God and man. Thus far the reading of the gospel lesson. Let us join our voices together in a bold confession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 191 or the back inside cover or from your own memory, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. May be seated as we continue with the sermon hymn 392. 392. <laughs>
love, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. Thus far the text. Dear friends in Christ, how much does God love you? My wife's favorite thing is to go like that. Jesus extended his arms this much to die on the cross. But today I want you to think about this a little deeper than that. I want you to know, each one of you, that God loves each one of you dearly. The Father loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to be born of the Virgin Mary to become your Savior. I want you to know that Jesus willingly shed his blood for you so that your sins might be paid, literally canceled out, and that you could receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life with him. The Holy Spirit loves you so much that he comes to you daily, especially through the word and the sacrament you're about to receive, the body and blood of Christ our Lord, real in, with, and under the bread and wine. Remember, that's what we learn in the catechism. This isn't some symbol. This is Christ's body and blood given and shed for us, brought to us by God's own Holy Spirit. By that same Holy Spirit, St. Paul wrote the words of our sermon text. And Paul wrote these words to assure the troubled hearts of these folks in Ephesus that they were indeed not out in the cold, but truly blessed and loved by God our Heavenly Father, by God Jesus the Son, by God the Holy Spirit. And if you want to condense Paul's message down into one simple phrase, here it is, God loves you dearly. We just sang that, didn't we? Hmm? God loves me dearly. And has, I want you to remember this, has for all eternity, since the very beginning, even before the beginning of the world, right up to this moment, and until there is no earth anymore. Paul wrote to us, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. Consider, my friends, how dearly we are loved by God. Paul tells us that the Heavenly Father blesses us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing. He doesn't hold any back. You get the whole plate. Imagine if you went to a buffet and they said, well, you can eat this part, but not that part. Hmm? I've actually been to places like that where it's like, well, the standard buffet is this. But if you're special, you can get the rest of it, you know, like the, the stuff I really like, like the lobster and scallops. And you know what I'm talking about? Huh? I mean, anybody can get bologna. I want the good stuff. That's what God, the Heavenly Father, wanted for all of us the good stuff. Understand also that all of us need the forgiveness of sins 
and eternal life. Is there a person gathered here today who can truly say that he or she has never thought an unkind thing? Anybody, can you say you've never spoken an unkind word? Huh? Think about that. Finally, have you always acted in ways that are pleasing to God? I had a lady once, and I've shared this with you before. You know, on our, our sign we used to have on it, Sinners Welcome. And did she call us, dear? I think she did. She called up and she says, why, are, why am I not welcome at your church? Huh? And her response was, well, I'm not a sinner. So ergo, I'm not welcome at your place of worship. And let me tell you, trust me, uh, I tried very hard theologically to help leader to understanding that uh, any kind of act like that is a sin. Oh, she wouldn't have anything of it. No, 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 no. That's, I'm not a bank robber. I'm not a murderer. Okay, well, sorry we're not changing our sign just for you. In, in modern day version, with social media, she'd be considered a troll. That was basically her, her attempt to uh, kind of get us rattled. She was a troll. She just didn't, she refused to think that there was anything wrong with her. That she might have erred or stumbled or committed some sort of sin. Well, that's selfishness, isn't it? And selfishness, unfortunately, rears its head in our own lives. Even in this season of Christmas, we struggle with selfishness. We are much more willing to be recipients of gifts than to be the giver. I don't know about you, but um, there are times where when I say, how much of myself can I give to everybody? I got to keep a little bit for myself too. And then God fools me with sending me somebody, not fools me, but uh, he sent me someone who needs even more than I do. The awful reality, my friends in Christ, is that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And what we have actually earned from our sins, the wages is death. And the death that I speak of, of course, is not just the temporal death, the body ceasing to function. We're talking about sin creating eternal death, full separation between us and God. And that is horrible. Even as we experience it here, I, can, I was just sharing with someone a little bit earlier of that separation. My mother struggled with mental issues at the last part of her life because she was separated from others. Imagine being separated from God and everyone else for all eternity. Every one of us must confess that we have not obeyed the commandments of God perfectly and that those times when we do not obey God's commandments perfectly need to be confessed and need to be forgiven. We must also remember that we are unable on our own to earn our way into heaven. We simply can't do it. We can't do enough good works to cover over our many sins. And I've shared this with you, this little story with you before, but if you ever want a really interesting uh, literary way of understanding what sin is really like, read the portrait of Dorian Gray. It's a horror story. It's a story about a young man who was incredibly handsome and incredibly attract attractive to women. He was wealthy, 
he could do whatever he want. He was in social circles that uh, everybody was willing to die to get into. But Dorian Gray had an Achilles heel, and that was his appearance, his youth, his vitality. And when he started to notice that that started to deteriorate, you, you probably all remember when you got your first gray hair, don't you? Huh? Especially the ladies. It happens, doesn't it? Huh? I think my first gray hairs were in my whiskers, but either way, he started to notice, and he made a pact with the devil to stay young forever. And the devil gave him a portrait of himself, which he hung up. But then he noticed over the years, as he was a sinful guy, that the portrait started to change. He didn't, the portrait did. And it started getting pretty ugly. So he hid it in his attic of his house. He covered it with a shroud to make sure nobody would ever see it. He continued his life of debauchery, thinking that somehow, you know, he was going to live forever like that. And one day, he met once again a young woman that he had met when he was a child, or actually a young man. She was a child. And she became a very beautiful young woman, very wonderful young woman. And he decided he was going to make her his. He was going to settle down and get married and make her uh, his wife, and that then things would be better. Well, he did. He married her. And when he went back to his home after having married this young woman, he took a look at just a little peek at that picture of himself, thinking, well, maybe it reversed itself just a little bit. But when he looked, it was a horrible, howling-looking, skeletal image howling at him over his sins. And Gray, becoming enraged, takes a knife. He's going to destroy this image. And he slashes it. And all of a sudden, the image on the portrait is restored. And Gray is dead on the floor. We like to fool ourselves that we're not doing anything wrong at times. Especially when others wrong us. Well, it's okay to respond in kind. But no, it's not. God sees it. And we need to face our own sin. That's what God's law does. Remember... In your confirmation instruction, the law acts like a mirror. It acts like a mirror. And let me tell you something. Sometimes when I get up in the morning and I look in that mirror and I see my hair standing, what little I have left, standing straight up, okay, I'm like, wow, I better not go out like that. <laughs> I could scare the children. <laughs> Jake gets it. Yeah. So that mirror shows me my own imperfections. It really does. And I'm able to take care of that. That's the purpose of God's law, one of the purposes of God's law, to show us our imperfections, to drive us back to the Savior and say, be merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Now, in Paul's proclamation, I want you all to understand this is not a general pro proclamation of God's grace, but rather it was intended to be personal for all of the saints there at Ephesus, and for all of you this morning. God loves you. God calls you by name. God's plan of salvation was set out in eternity for you, even as it is for the rest of God's elect. God 
dearly loves us. Jesus, who is God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, loves you so dearly that he willingly became a man. Anybody familiar with the old story, The Prince and the Pauper? Yeah. I really don't understand how a prince would ever want to become a pauper. I guess he figured there was more freedom in being able to do that. But having decent food to eat and a roof over my head and, and clothes on my back sounds pretty good. The word pauper means you don't have any of that. You wear rags. You scramble for something to eat, and you don't sleep in the same place every night in a row because you don't have a place to live. Jesus came from heaven down here. Jesus gave up everything he had there for you and I. He was born of a human mother to become a human, just like you and I, yet born without sin. As a man, Jesus lived perfectly, didn't he? He lived perfectly under the law of the God so that he might obey it as you and I were supposed to. Jesus then loved us so much that he gratefully or he gladly shouldered our sin while on the cross. Now, dying on a cross was bad enough. They've actually, believe it or not, they've actually run scientific tests on people being crucified. They didn't drive the spikes in their hands or scourge them. But here's the deal. I want I want all of you to listen to this. Um they had actually reasonably healthy young men get up on, on a structure. They tied them in place. And after 45 minutes, every one of them wanted down from that because it was so uncomfortable they couldn't stand it. They were already starting to struggle to breathe. That's without all of the other prep work that they put Jesus through. And on top of all of that, to bear upon himself the burden of our own sin, not his. He who was without sin became sin for us. Wow. What a burden. But in so doing, Jesus once and for all time paid the price of our sins. Not just yours and mine, but all of mankind. And that's something... I'm going to tell you right now that we Lutherans believe that a lot of other people's, a lot of other Christian churches don't believe. There are churches out there that believe that the only people's sins who were forgiven are the people who were predestined by God to be saved. Well, I want you to think about that. You remember me talking about that buffet that was limited? Oh yeah, you can go through here, but don't touch any of this other stuff. That's, that's a result that you're seeing. And that simply isn't true. That's a construct of someone's mind to say, well, if people go to hell, Jesus must not have died for their sins. Yes, he did. The reason that they would go to hell is because they reject outright what Jesus did for them and refuse to believe. And that's the truly sad part, isn't it? To think that someone would take so great a gift and throw it away. Imagine if I had a check for a million dollars, and I've asked you this before, and all you had to do was take it. You know me, you trust me, you probably would take it. You might say, Pastor, where did that come from? But I'm giving you something today, not me, Jesus is, but I'm telling you about it today 
something that's worth far more than a million dollars because it costs the blood and the life of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? All we need to do is put the hand of faith out there to receive those blessings and God richly bestows it on us. God the Holy Spirit is the one who makes that possible for you to believe. He's the one who comes into our hearts when we are baptized. He's the one who comes to us when the word of God is being read and preached to us. He's the one. He's a busy guy. He's even busier than Santa Claus. Think about that. All Santa Claus has to do is go to the places where people think that they believe in Santa Claus. Well, the Holy Spirit goes wherever the word of God is being preached and the sacraments are being administered. That's far busier. And yet he gladly do, does it every single day. Dear friends in Christ, God loves you dearly. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all have their part that they have and continue to play in making sure that you are blessed beyond your comprehension. Put the hand out there by faith and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending Jesus. Amen. Please rise. May now the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.
We present our tithes and offerings in the service of the kingdom of God in the words of the offertory prayer. From there, let us proceed to the prayer of the church, which is prayed responsively. Uh, we have two prayer requests. First of all, uh, for Del Larkham, who's going to be having surgery on his heart here in the very near future. And uh, also for Roland and Marion, or is Roland and Marion? For Robert and Linda, I apologize, Robert and Linda Russo on the occasion of their 50th wedding anniversary. So we congratulate them for that. Together now let us pray. <clears throat> Father, the gift of your son brings with it gifts so precious, word, light, love, life. That is our humble offerings pale in comparison. Accept our gifts, we pray, and empower us by your Holy Spirit's power to bring your gifts to the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We cannot understand how this is possible. But we believe it because of the clear testimony of your word. You have chosen us, O Lord, that we should be holy and blameless before you. But thanks be to you, for through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have made us holy and blameless. He has revealed your glory as a light shining in the darkness. Now we know that we can stand before you in his righteousness. As you sent John the Baptist to point to the light which shines in the darkness, so also empower us with your Holy Spirit to bear witness to that light. The grace and truth we have received through him. O oh Lord, merciful Father, as we are gathered this day, we are mindful of the health which allows us to be able to come and gather to worship before you. But we also know, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, that there are many whose lives have been touched by pain, illness, and suffering, unable to gather with us. And so, Lord, we lift before you Barbara Annabel. Pat Ausberger, Irene Battistini, the Busky families, Carissa, John Devine, Richard Delinsky, Bob and Eric Dalek, Lori G, Victoria Hildalgo, Susan Kelly, John and Ruth Kosmic, Ruth McCabe, Peter and Kathy Maroka, Melissa, Michelle Plant, Elaine Russo, Lorraine Schweitzer, Basil and Rocky S. Garrett Stribling, Sandy Sweet, Jan and Barb Tasker, Dennis Topp, Cindy Whiting, and our own district president, Timothy Yaden. We ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, on behalf of these and all others we name in our hearts and minds before you, that you would have mercy upon them and visit them in their hour of need. And if it is your will, O oh Lord, fully restore them all in body and in soul. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we also come before you this day asking that you would be with the doctors, nurses, and other technologists who work upon Dell in his surgery, that he, O oh Lord, may be fully restored and may continue his life of service to you and to his family. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we also give you thanks and praise that you have blessed Robert and Linda with 50 years of wedded life and ask your continued blessings to be upon both of them, that they may continue to serve you with quiet minds and may, O oh Lord, reflect to the younger generation the power of being together and continuing together in married love. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we also come before you this day mindful of the various natural disasters and events that are happening throughout our world and especially our country. 
Father, we have seen and witnessed a lot of death and destruction, especially of property, and the fires in the west and in the snows that have uh, killed others, in the ice storms that have affected others, and even here in New England, the lack of sun that we so greatly and desperately want to see. Be with us, O Heavenly Father, to strengthen us through the same. And if it is your will, Lord, calm and quiet the storms, in, not just in our lives, but in the world around us, that we, O Lord, may live quiet and peaceable lives in your service. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we also continue to pray on behalf of those who have been afflict, afflicted and affected by the coronavirus. It has touched virtually every life on the, on the planet, but some worse than others. And we ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen and heal those whose lives have been touched by it. We ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, especially on behalf of the men and women who serve in our hospitals and first response units, that they, O oh Lord, may not become fatigued in their efforts to help people get better, that they, O oh Lord, may find renewal and joy in the service that they provide. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, O oh Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless those in the mission field as well as those in our armed forces throughout the world who are about, about and about protecting and defending the lives and freedoms of not just our nation, but many nations throughout the world, and in service to bringing the good news of Jesus to others. Bless and keep them in their sacred service and restore them at the end of their shift with their loved ones, Lord, in your mercy. In the name of him whose light still shines to all the world for the salvation of many. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, Jesus, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the Jesus Christ, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and 
gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had finished eating, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood that has been shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
poured out upon the cross for the forgiveness of all sins. The blood of Christ given for the sin of the world. Take and drink the blood of Christ. It is our hope and our hope. The blood of Christ shed that we may be forgiven. It is true God and true Lord Jesus, our Savior, who is the true God and true Lord Jesus.
thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have blessed and refreshed us through this wonderful gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, both in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you in this new year and give you all his peace. house to yours we wish you all a much happier much healthier and much more joyous new year in Christ our Lord amen thank you God's peace be with you go in peace serve the Lord amen